Facebook Live. My mom's been showing up lately, so maybe my mom will be here today, maybe not. See? It's so touching when your mom shows up. Especially when you especially when you teach something like this, you know, and it's it's so out of your mom's uh, comfort zone, you know, but it's like my mom is like she, and she's always been like that. And my mom is another example of something that you brought up. So the theme today is about diversity or being diversive versus conversive, right? You need them both. You, you have to have the diverse and the conversity in order to really balance your life in such a way so you make the right kind of decisions, right? So an example of diversity would be um, the Kundalini, right? You, you get the feedback from the people with the Kundalini and you know some people are like, oh, you know, I wouldn't want that to happen. Well, that's a very converse, conversative way of looking at that subject, right? And if you spend most of your life being conversive, then you're not going to go very far at all. You're going to, you're, you may be, you may be comfortable, but comfortable does not always equal the growth that we're here to experience. And when you start becoming more diversive, you come out of your comfort zone, right? I'll give you an example. I was doing a private yesterday. I have this uh, wealthy uh, person down in Rancho Santa Fe that I've been doing privates with now for probably 10 years. Matter of fact, I started doing privates with him before I was even a, a, a Kundalini Yoga teacher, maybe 12 years ago. And um, he had a big, he has like, he had a, at one time he had a like really huge, you know, 8,000, 9,000 square foot house in Rancho Santa Fe, and I was cleaning the carpets one day, and he's a, he's one of those type A stockbroker, you know, just real, everything's mouth and, and words and people and places and things, and, you know, showing me text messages from, like, all these powerful people and all that kind of stuff, which, which to me just doesn't, which didn't matter, and it was the perfect relationship between us because it got it, it really drew me it drew him to me and me to him we have this like really amazing dynamic kind of a thing and he asked me one day because i'm cleaning carpets and you know i'm like 50 years old cleaning carpets and sweating and you know i've got this kind of this, this old truck running outside and it's you know it's doing the job and you know, and he's in this, like, big mansion thing, and and he just pulled me over, and he's like, because cause he asked me a question, and I and I mentioned the word yoga. And and, he, and then I just kind of walked away from him, and I let him, I let him be with that for a little while, and then, you know, I, I kind of knew we were magnetizing. I could, I could feel his energies. His energies were needing probably the exact opposite of what I was needing at that time. So we were very polarizing to each other. So later that day, I'm still cleaning this big house, and, and he's like, what are you talking about with this yoga? And I said, I go, I go look, I go, it's not for you. I go, it's, it's the hardest, most challenging thing that you're ever going to be able to ask yourself to do in your life. And I go, you just... I go, you're just not there, you know, like that, you know, and, and, and I'm, you know, and this guy's like, you know, he's just, he's got it going on, and he, you know, he's got the computer screen that goes all the way around the desk, and he's making moves in the, on, the, on the market, and he's, you know, he's got the potential to make more in one day than I can in a whole year, probably five years sometimes in my life, and so that's the way the relationship started, and so... Basically, what it came down to is like, I said, look, I said, the hardest thing that you're ever going to be able to do, the most challenging thing that I'm ever going to be able to do in my own life is to be able to be quiet and be able to be with myself. And that's, that's what yoga does when I practice it. 
it, 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 it brings me on a physiological and a psychological and emotional and a spiritual, it brings me to a place that I, that I can't get to outside of doing yoga. I can't get to it. I can get to it sometimes if some kind of a tragedy happens and, I, and, and my system becomes shocked in the kind of tragic energy for a moment, I can like get, I can feel it. I can feel it, but I can't hold on to it. I can't, I can't sustain it. I can't create a direction with it like I can when I practice yoga. So fast forward all the way to yesterday, 12 years later, I'm walking into his property and, and he's now in a different property and he's way up on the top of this hill and he's overlooking the valley down in Rancho Santa Fe and he's got this pool that like goes out and then it looks like it drops off the end of the, the, the yard, you know, it just because the yard ends and the pool looks like, you know, and I'm, and, and in my own life right now, like I'm out in the backyard and I'm like digging this dirt in this perimeter with this other guy with a wheelbarrow, one wheelbarrow at a time, moving the dirt, you know, backing the fence around my property with this extra dirt that I have. And I'm going, I'm, I'm trying to get an above ground pool. It, it's the most, it, you know, and it sounds so ridiculous, but it's like, it means a lot to me just so I can have a little above ground pool so my grandchildren can swim and, you know, for the next years, you know, and myself too, you know, just a place to cool off. And so I'm walking into his yard and I'm looking at this pool and I'm thinking of all the energy that it's taking me to just do this little $1,100 above ground pool with all the digging and, 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 and all the stuff that goes around it and all the energy it takes and all the money, you know, that I have to like figure out just to spend that little amount of money in my life, right? And I'm walking in and I'm looking at this guy's pool and I mean, his pool and his concrete is, how, is worth more than probably my house, you know? And I'm walking in and I'm looking at the pool and, you know, he kind of comes walking out and I'm like, I go, do you know how fucking lucky you are to have that? And he just kind of looks at me and, and here's the story of my diversity versus conversity. He goes, he goes, I could care less about that. It doesn't. It means nothing. Absolutely nothing to me. And I'm. And, and I. And I get it. You know, I can get where he's coming from because that's his environment. And you know, he's not. He's not about his environment. He's about himself. Because he's a really deep person. Really deep. He has a deep need to want to change the world and do it in such a way with making more and more and more and more money because he knows in his heart that he's a good person and that he can do so much with the money that he's able to make, and he does. He has a whole, uh, he has a whole reality of, of, of like kids and adults and this diverse uh, dynamic of different cultures that he brings together, and he's just a beautiful person, and I really admire him. So yesterday in my own life, I had an incident with my own employee who was showing up and he showed up about an hour late yesterday and I just had enough. And I just kind of made the call on the phone and I said, where are you, are you coming? You know, like I've got a schedule made and all this stuff and this has been going on. So I said, look, I said, you're, you're pretty much done. I go, I'm done with you. He's a, he's a fantastic employee. He does like, he, he's so fantastic with my customers. He's really hard for me to let go of, but on a basic level, he just doesn't have the ingredients that that shows the respect you need to have to have a job and to just like show up on time. Just like the basic stuff he's missing. And I did it as long as I could. And so I was in that yesterday when I got to his house and we started this conversation and I got really conversive in my outlook. Well, I'm 60, I'm going to be 60 years old, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, it's probably time for me to start, maybe this is a sign, you know, that I'm supposed to maybe start moving on from this, and he's just kind of sitting back and he's listening to me, and, you know, finally, thank God, he looks at me and he, and he start, and he just basically said, he goes, look, he goes, you have this kid 
who you're able to employ. He's like, your whole, your whole purpose and reality and goal as a business owner is to be able to employ as many people as you can, to give them opportunities to have this work, to create an income, to go home and feed their families, and to be able to give them opportunities in their life to grow. So, you know, he goes, so this guy's here, and he goes, so this one guy is, is not doing well, so you're just going to fold it on down. And he was explaining to me how conversive and linear my thought process was. He goes, you're telling me you're 60 years old? He's like, you know, 60 years old is the new 30 years old. So he goes, wham, 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 right? Just, just, just stop that. Right, because that's when, I, when I'm getting conversive in my thinking. That's where I'm, that's where my mind goes. I get very linear. I go back into all the years I put in of pushing that wand and my arthritis, and I've got this story that would just it would bore you to death, right? But I could tell it to you over and over and over. I could repeat it to you so many times. You, if you saw me coming, you'd run the other way, right? So that's where the conversiveness gets me, and 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 he was able to. Just everything he said was, he goes, he goes, there's 10 people over here that would be so grateful to have this job that your employee is not going to have anymore. He goes, you just haven't made the connection yet. He goes, there are businesses out there and, and there are contacts that I am willing to help you get, but not in your attitude. He goes, I, I, he, he knows the guy who, he knows the richest guy in San Diego. He told me the guy's name. He goes, he owns the Hotel Bell. He owns the, the Lowe's down at the end of the Coronado Strip. And he knows, he knows everybody, this guy. And he goes, I have the ability, he goes, if I make a phone call and I tell them that I want to, them to give you a shot, he goes, guess what? You're going to get the work. He goes, but I'm not even going there with you because of how you think and, and you know, and all this. And I'm just like, sitting back and now all of a sudden I'm going from the con conversity part of me is like oh I better shut it down I'm at that age and now all of a sudden he's taking me full spectrum to this diversity type of way of looking at my business and the potential that my business has and the amount of people my business potentially has to employ to, to make the money to go home and feed their families and all that kind of stuff so that's what today is about. Today is about a, 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 diversive, a diversive way of looking at a fork would be to see the fork not as a fork that you take and feed your mouth. To look at the fork and to say how many different things that you could come up with and reasons and ways and creativity that you could actually use that fork in a life situation. I mean, in some ways, a fork could end up saving your life in some way, shape, or form. I'm watching this show called Alive, and it's all about being in the wilderness and, and just surviving in the wilderness on just the, the little animals that they can trap if they're able to trap and the fish they catch and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, out there, if somebody actually found a fork, like how much use that fork would be put to. So... I'm just throwing that out there for you today because I just want you to acknowledge those areas in your own life where you've been so conversive, where you've been so safe and so held back that it's really stealing from your vitality. So that's what this is about today. So let's just be open-minded to that. I'm uh, really grateful that you're here. Thank you. And uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and tune in, sit up nice and tall, rub the palms. There's a lot of uh, diversive type of thoughts that can come with everything we're doing, including the rubbing of your palms right now. There's a lot more going on here that meets the eye. You can feel it. You can sense it all of the areas and aspects of your life that it has a way of bringing you in and grounding you into a place like a platform that you can move forward from. Spread the fingers, thumbs to the sternum, elbows out, feel the heat in the palms, close your eyes gently, drop your chin slightly. 
gaze into your spiritual eye and just see yourself on whatever platform that you need to have yourself on as a starting point in your life this morning. Because believe it or not, your life is starting right now this morning. You know, whatever you've carried in here that's been a weight on your shoulders does not have to be here right now as you sit getting ready to tune in and practice Kundalini Yoga. Whatever you brought in here this morning that is that is providing for you, that you're having a bigger experience of feeling better in your life about yourself and seeing the growth that you're looking for, you can hang on to that, bring it to your platform this morning. Inhale deep through the nose. Exhale mouth. Inhale it to the end. Oh. up the rhythm.
come to center, inhale deep. Squeeze Mulba and bring the navel in. Project spiritual eye, tip, tip of your tongue, upper palate. Just find yourself floating in time and space in the perfect spot and the perfect platform for you to go and to be guided. Exhale, release. Arms come down, thumb and forefinger gently press. Just take a moment. Take a moment and pull in all of the aspects of time and space that have been kind of bewildered within yourself in times where you're not grounded. It's times like this where you can take it all back. You can actually get it all back. You just have to believe. You have to really, really believe. Everything has happened for such diversive reasons in your life, maybe beyond what you things that are happening within your heart every time you inhale and exhale as your heart gets massaged from your ribs. See the, the diverse reality of where your mind gets to have a platform to take you in a direction to have a bigger experience of your own greatness this morning, your own reason for being here, which might go a little bit beyond what you may have thought. Conversive thoughts allow you and bring you closer into the moment and merge with the diversity of what you're doing. if you're in it. Climb out of it. And 
and walk your path with dignity and integrity and feel victory. Inhale deep. Thumbs together, release the fingers, squeeze mulbon, navel to the spine, tip of the tongue, upper palate, project, project. Exhale, release the hands. Lean forward slightly, cross your ankles behind you, and sit on the back in the easy pose, and sit up nice and tall. And once again, just be in the moment. And just allow for all the times in your life that you knew on a very deep level that this is where you needed to be on a feeling level, on an emotional level. And how differently... Everything can always turn out if you can bring yourself to this point you're at right now. All of the circumstances in life can be amazingly different with the experience if you can bring yourself to this. That's why we call it practice. When you can start to diversify what certain things meant to you and you can open yourself up and see that there's more. It's like giving yourself new life force.
deep, forward, tip of the tongue, squeeze move on, project, keep adding the projection of the bigger experience you want to have in your life right now, whatever it is. Exhale, release. Pull the navel way into your spine. Drop the chin to your chest. Pull on those shins. Roll those shoulders forward. Inhale back to a neutral spine. Lean forward. Turn your toes under. And let's press back and get our legs going a little bit. Do 26 like we usually do. Start here in Sat, we'll press up into Nam, heels. In a perfect world, they're touching. In a perfect world, you're gonna stay on the balls of your feet even as you come up. Nothing changes here. It doesn't matter, it's your world. It's your practice. Sat, Nam, Sat, Nam, Sat, Nam, Sat. Thank you. 
nice big circles. Now reverse. Nice big circles in reverse. Shake your legs out. Did all those frogs. We got that blood pumping down there. Now I want you to call on that blood and that oxygen as we get down into chair pose. We're going to go two minutes. Diversify, conversify, merge them. Let the fire begin.
now you can look at it and you can take it on directly. You can see all the little pixels as you zoom into it, start to disintegrate and just fall away. Because you don't have to have it anymore. All of the lessons you needed to have from it have been accomplished in your life. I can't emphasize that enough.
Whatever you're at, whatever you're doing is perfect, but finish strong. Feel good about whatever it is you're doing, whatever choices you're making in your life. No regrets. No turning back. Inhale deep. Exhale, bring your knees to your chest. Inhale forward, exhale back. Before we go back into Savasana, inhale forward, exhale back. Smooth out your low back from any possible bent up trauma that you might have. And then lay on back and relax. And I'll get something more soothing on. Constantly continue to teach yourself. Continue to show yourself. Continue to wow yourself. If you were able to look at a particular proje pro projection, in your spiritual eye and dissolve something. Don't be afraid to go to something else and confront that and dissolve it too. Once you dissolve it, they're gone. The molecules and the particles break up and they move on. They get to diversify because you have let them go.
morning to look at all of the aspects of our world that we live in right now that appear to be scary, but look at it in a diversive way and see all of the great vastness that can come from the changes taking place from the events. Recognize that it has to be both ways. You have It has to have both ways in order for the change to happen. There needs to be great challenge and we have to rise above it and see it on a diversive level so we can recognize the truth of what is to come. We hold on to that in our hearts. And we have faith. And we practice our yoga. And we build our own platforms of inner strength and wisdom and integrity. In our own personal victory, in our own quest in our lives. Deepen your breath and start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and your wrists and your ankles. Stretch your arms. Bend your knees. Pull the left knee in deep to your chest and release the right leg out and inhale nice and deep and as you exhale, roll on over, pull it across your body. Try to relax that shoulder of the, your opposite shoulder, try to relax it, relax your head and neck. Don't pull your legs so far across that it's stressful on you. Very relaxing twisting of your spine. Come back to center. Hug your knees to your chest. Pull the right knee in. Release the left leg out. Inhale and exhale over. Nice deep breath. Deep breaths like a like a sigh of relief every time you exhale, just knowing that you've made it. You've made it to this point in your life where you can make all the difference, not only in your own life, but in the world that we live in. Come back to center, hug your knees to your chest. Don't cross your ankles. Take a deep inhale breath as you Bring your nose up to touch your knees as you revigorate, recalculate, re-energize. Exhale the breath and rub the soles of your feet and the palm of your hands together <clears throat> at the same time. Bring your hands to your knees, inhale forward, exhale back a few times, and come on to seated. this mantra, Had, 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 is the beginning of your energetic journey. Place these sounds at the third chakra, the navel point, to initiate the kundalini energy, Had, which means God, in creativity. Pull the navel in slightly with each repetition. The second stage of this mantra is Wa, He, Guru. Place this sound at your heart chakra, as you pull the diaphragm lock, 
simultaneously pulling the navel point towards the spine. Hold these two locks fixed for the rest of the mantra, which is Sat Nam. Project this sound from the fifth chakra at your throat as you chant. Gently apply the neck lock. The last part of the mantra is Har Hari. Har is placed at the sixth chakra and Hari goes through the top of the seventh chakra to infinity. The eyes may automatically rise up a bit at this particular point. Then we're going to quickly inhale, bringing the cycle of energy and attention all the way back to the third chakra while relaxing all of the locks. Repeat the mantra again and again and let yourself be drawn more and more deeply into this sound current. So here's the sound current. Hud, 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 wahe guru satanam arahari. Hud, 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 wahe guru satanam arahari. So that's the mantra, that's the sound. It's kind of monotone. Don't focus so much on what I just read about all the different chakras in the locks. Just get lost in the sound, okay? Get lost in the posture of just sitting with a straight spine with your chin slightly dropped, a little bit of a neck lock. Close your eyes completely and then just barely open them one-tenth. Don't judge it. Don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just barely open your eyes to one-tenth. Bring the hands into good Gyan Mudra. Har, 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 wahe guru satanam harahari. Har, 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 wahe guru satanam harahari. Har, 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 Wahe Guru Satanam Harahari. Hud, 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 Hud. Wahe Guru Satanam Harahari. Hud, 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 Hud. Wahe Guru Satanam Harahari. Hud, 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 Hud. Wahe Guru Satanam Harahari. Hud, Hud, Hud. Wahe Guru Satanam Harahari. Hud, 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 Hud.
We are men and women of God. We are men and women of God. May we recognize it. May we recognize it. We are men and women of this universe. We are men and women of this universe. May we deal with it in the light of God. May we deal with it in the light of God. We are men and women to be men and women. We are men and women to be men and women. May we feel the pride of it and be in grace. May we feel the pride of it and be in grace. We are men and women of success. We are men and women of success. May we accomplish it. May we accomplish it. We are men and women of self light and respect. We are men and women of self light and respect. May we understand it. May we understand it. We are men and women of merits. We are men and women of merits. May our virtues be known. May our virtues be known. We are men and women of knowledge. We are men and women of knowledge. May our compassion be known. May our compassion be known. We are men and women of absolute determination. We are men and women of absolute determination. May our kindness be known. May our kindness be known. We are men and women whom the world, the earth, and the universe may be very proud of. We are men and women of the world, the earth, and the universe may be very proud of. May the Thank you so much for being here today. 